Welcome back to the video playlist for dynamic programming. In the last video, we solved the longest common subsequence uh, use, problem using a, uh, a recursive algorithm. In this video, we're going to take that recursive algorithm and instead make it so it is a dynamic programming algorithm. So, actually, we're going to return uh, same thing I'm going to change the name of this function so that it's uh, LCSDP and as before we need to make a table that we can look values up in here and so I'm going to make a vector now in this case there are two arguments in the recursive function that change so we need a two-dimensional array here or a vector of vectors, uh, the arguments are themselves ints, and we return an int. So the, note that the arguments need to be ints because we're using them to look up in the vectors. The return type is the type that needs to be stored in here. For the rod cutting, we made the return type a double, and so our vector was a vector of doubles. Here, this returns an int, so our table is a vector of vector of, of ints, and how about I call our table? Uh, T and the length of uh, well, I'm trying to decide how I want exactly to set this up. Yeah, we'll go with this for for now. Um. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's make it the right size. So I will make it so the first dimension is S one dot length and then the second dimension is going to be full of vectors of s2 dot length to make sure that's happy the value this is going to return is simply the table looking up at s1 dot length minus one and s2 dot length minus one I'm writing C++ so I need to put a return on that Okay, uh, now what? Now we need to write the uh, loop that goes around and fills this up and has this logic from the recurrence relationship inside of it. So I'm going to start int i equals zero, uh, i less than s1 dot length plus plus i for int j equals zero, j less than s2 dot length plus plus j. Vi uh, is unhappy with me for something in here oh, because I'm missing a closed parentheses up on the line above. Okay. I just, since we're having that issue, I'm going to compile a missing argument line 18 uh, to the vector. Okay, so now the code compiles. Obviously, it's not complete. For each one of these elements, I need to uh, fill it in. And there are two possibilities, just as there were above. If s1 sub i equals equals s2 sub j, well, then I'm going to use table sub i minus 1 comma j minus sub j minus 1 and plus 1. And that's going to be stored at table sub i sub j, because that's what I'm doing. I'm filling in that location. We'll come back and see something that's kind of a, a nuance to this. Um, maybe some of you have already noticed that we have a, a problem here, but we'll hold off on it for just a second. Otherwise, if they're not equal, then t sub i sub j equals 
the max function applied to t sub i minus 1 sub j and t sub j oops, sub i sub j minus 1. Did I have that all correct? Okay. Um, and that'll run through and we just fill things uh, up that way. Now, the question is, what's the thing that's wrong? Well, you might notice i and j both start at zero and both of these expressions involve accessing t at indices that are i minus one or j minus one, which means we're gonna be pulling out negative indices from the vector and while it is going to be perfectly happy doing so, uh, it's going to be undefined behavior and who knows what the heck we're going to get. What we really need is we have to put some uh, some ifs around this because I'm going to have to do this in three different places to keep this looking syntactically happier I actually want to write another function I'll call it lookup and lookup takes as its first argument a vector of vector of ints. Um, yeah, but we call it t, because that is the value from below we're going to be passing in. And then the two indices that we want to look up in there. And in this case, the only possibilities are they go negative. So if i is less than 0 or j is less than 0, return zero, else return t sub i sub j. By writing that helper function now, I can change this, actually, let's undo that. Instead of doing a direct, uh, instead of going directly into t, I call lookup, I pass it t, I pass it the i minus one, I pass it the j minus one, like that. And the same thing down here. T, i minus one, and j. T, i, and j minus one. Okay. Let's Try using our DP solution. See if I've typed everything in correctly. Five, which was the answer that I wanted. Notice that returned really, really quickly. What if I actually put in a BC down at the end of S2? Now I should get a seven when I run it. Okay, so, uh, so that appears to work. Now the last thing here would be the question of, well, what if I want not just the length, but I actually want the strings? Well, this array t, or this vector of vectors, or two-dimensional storage, uh, the table that we're looking things up in, has the information that I want from this. And so I can actually write, uh, we could write another loop in here and backtrack over that. So I'll do that, I'll come back for one more video and we will add to this so that instead of just returning the length of the strings, it actually returns one of the possible strings that has that length.